Hello everyone. Welcome to Brainford Arts. This is a program that's designed to explore and introduce uh, viewers to art in all of its various aspects. As you know, uh, art uh, has many forms and, uh, and people who create art uh, do it in many different ways. And sometimes we tend to think of, uh, of art, you know, in a more stagnant uh, uh, interpretation. You look at a painting on a wall or you, or you view something in a gallery and uh, you don't really realize all of the effort and thought that goes into creating that work of art. And up to now, uh, what we've tried to do in the program is introduce artists who, uh, whose art uh, has, uh, takes on different forms. We've had an artist who works in glass, we've had an uh, artist who works with the scissors and never touches a brush. Uh, and we had an artist who uh, cuts paper and creates beautiful designs with the paper. Uh, and today, my guest is Holly Whiting, who is a Brainford artist, and we're going to talk a little bit about two aspects of the work that she does. Uh, one is her innovative approach to uh, creating uh, her paintings and, and the kinds of techniques that she uses to get the results that she gets. And the other one is a very exciting project that she was commissioned to uh, create. Uh, something that you don't uh, see much of anymore, and that's uh, religious art, ecclesiastical art. So first of all, Holly, welcome. Thank you. And so how, when did you first know you wanted to be an artist? Did you always know that, or? I, I never thought about being anything else. Oh, okay. I always thought that. So were you I one of those kids who liked to draw when you were? All the time. All the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you followed your passion. Well, in a roundabout way. I didn't, I didn't always work as an artist because even though as a, as a child I never could imagine myself doing anything else, really when it came down to crunch time and right. you know, college um, and graduating college, I didn't think I could really, it wasn't something you could really do, you know. So I had other jobs that were a little bit creative, but, you know, I was a drafts person. I did, I worked in graphic arts for a little bit, but I didn't really start working as an artist till probably 15 years ago. Okay. You know? So you, you raise an interesting point, you know, even for the parents out there who uh, sometimes will not necessarily encourage their kids who are inclined mm -hmm. uh, to want to pursue a career like that for the very reasons that you just uh, spoke of. You know, can you make a living doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, is there a market for what you want to do? And so it's wonderful when ultimately you do get to do what you wanted to do when you were a kid, which is to be an artist. It's, it's the best. I wish I had done it sooner. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about the kind of art you do. So you, you're a painter primarily, right? Mm -hmm. But you also do other things, right? Well, finishes and I do. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do decorative paintings. Decorative. I do decorative finishes for right. you know residential so, like, applications. So you can take and, a wall and yeah. make it look like something yeah, else. Yeah, I mean right? that's you know that's where I earn the money because mm -hmm. not everybody wants to buy a painting. So, right. right. As a lot of artists have other forms of income. So right. my form of income really is a little bit creative, which is kind of cool, right. but yeah, um, not as much fun as making yeah. like paintings. Like fool the eye kind of stuff. Yes, right? trompe l'oeil, yeah. 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 yeah, make it look like marble or right. make it look like stone. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's fun too. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's physically demanding yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> Climb ladders and scaffolds all day. So one of the last shows that I saw that um, you had, which was in New Haven, you know, what, six months ago maybe, uh, you were showing these, I thought, amazingly beautiful and creative works that were done with uh, using this, like... Reactive metals. Reactive metals. Yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? So reactive metals is... Um, Basically, what I what I use is a is a paint that's acrylic based paint that has real metal in it. It has copper in it, or it has iron like 
iron shavings. It's heavy. When you pick up a can of this paint, it's like picking up a can of iron. And um, what I do is I, I, I paint it on, and for example, if I use the iron paint, paint it on, it's black. If I oxidize it, it, it rusts and it becomes rusty. And so it's, uh, it's kind of a cool uh, medium. It was developed for faux finishing, which is, some, which is what we just talked about, you know, for wall finishes and stuff. Um, but I use it in art because it's, uh, it, it's kind of a, what's cool about it is you, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Um, so, for example, I, you know, you can, you can kind of make an image out of it, uh, but when you paint it on, as I say, the iron is black when you paint it on, the copper is copper colored when you paint it on. When you, when you oxidize it, the copper becomes blue or green. Oxidizing meaning you add an acid to it? You or? add, um, it's actually, uh, it's an oxidizer that actually is sold as a companion to the paint, oh. and the paint is made by Modern Masters. And um, it's there's so it creates a chemical reaction. Exactly, mm. and um, so when what you what you see when you paint it is not what you see when it's done. Right. So it's a little bit like painting blind. Yeah, yeah. Um, so because you yourself won't know until you, you don't see what happens and e and, with and that even, process. Exactly, and and sometimes the process doesn't go exactly as you as you expect, depending on the humidity or the temperature. So it has, there's a lot involved in it. But um, I just find it to be really uh, just fascinating to work with. And, mm -hmm. and, and you can never repeat the same thing twice. If you want to recreate what you've done, it, you're just not, right. it's not going to happen. You just sort of. It's the process itself. Yeah, so I feel like a lot of times I just like kind of let the painting show me what it wants to become, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, great, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. So you got an example of that? So I have some examples yeah. of that. I like to do, um, one, of, one, one of the things I like to do is abstract landscapes. Mm. So I have, um, this for example would be iron paint painted along the bottom. So when this went on it was black. And up here is this copper paint that when it went on, you can see a little bit of it here, is this copper color and then you oxidize it, this, this becomes patinaed, this becomes rusted, and then I added some other, just other colors in, in, into it to create the abstract landscape. And I do a lot of those. Yeah. Um, these are, these are um, a couple that, that I did that some, I left some of the copper unoxidized, so you can see that kind of throughout there. You know, and you don't know exactly what you're going to get, but you mm. kind of have an idea. You know, I know the, the, uh, yeah, because you're putting you're putting that paint where you want exactly. it to be. Exactly, you just don't know exactly image, what it's going to do once you once you sure. walk yeah. away. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's kind yeah. of the fun so, part. Of it. Yeah, there's so there's some of those, and uh, I I do you know I do a little bit of other stuff with it that is kind of fun. Um, this one you know is a kind of um, figure, and um, again here is the. Um, oxidized copper and bronze and then some of the rust um, to create this figure hmm. and it again you know it's sort of like you don't know what's going to happen but I do like to I like I like to create a lot of um, a lot of activity a lot of movement in the piece so I like drips and texture um, here's a little bit of a larger piece that is yeah, that's you might, wonderful. You might see that yeah. that's a self-portrait. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And, um, you know, again, there's, there's uh, drips, of, um, drips of some of the copper here and the rust. And mostly, this is mostly done, there's very little um, colored paint here. This is mostly done with just the copper and iron. So hmm. everywhere you see blue is copper paint, and everywhere you see rust is is the iron paint. Yeah, so that's like when you have a a piece of copper. If you don't polish it, it'll turn that it color. Patinas, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I think it's uh, wonderful. I it's kind of cool. And what's cool about these two is when you when you see them close up in person, you can really see a lot of the depth of the texture of of the chemical process. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and and. Um, the fact that while you are creating this, you have a certain amount of control, but then some of it is out of your control. 
exactly how it's going to end up looking. So, Absolutely. And, and, and I think, I think because of that, cool it's a little addictive it. because you just you want to see what's going to happen and sometimes it happens the way you want sometimes it happens maybe you don't like the way it comes out and sometimes it's a complete surprise and you just want to do it again <laughs> so it becomes very addictive and i've created yeah, a lot of yeah. these pieces i know um, i mean as i said when i saw when i saw your work in the show i was really blown away by those larger pieces the trip, yeah trip, i always some, have trouble with that i've name. got a couple of triptychs a triptych, diptych right which are um, three pieces yeah. that are hung together but and create a visual that's connected but the pieces yes, but are not they're connected separate. yeah i do uh, like to work large yeah, yeah. and those those are wonderful yeah I, I was i mean i i loved there was one in particular i loved i wish i could have taken it on with me <laughs> <laughs> it's probably i still, still can i know i still can <laughs> um if, if i have room in this place i hope to move to maybe i will <laughs> but i i just loved it and oh. uh and I hope, you know, that people will have an opportunity to see some of those larger pieces that you've done because they yeah, are so I, impressive I, um, and I, I have evocative. Like the piece that I was looking at was some trees mm -hmm. and uh, with all of that metallic uh, uh, effect that you get. Yeah, I think, and, and the piece you're talking about, it was, I used some of this, um, the reactive metals, but I also in that piece used other kinds of metallics like foil and gold leaf, yeah. I remember. Um, yeah. And just, it, I just love to play with whatever's in my studio. Yeah, and I do have a lot of really stuff in my amazing. studio because I do yeah. the faux finishing. Yeah. So well, I wind I hope, up with I a hope, lot of... I hope the viewers will get a chance to, to see well, some of those. Well, right now I have one of these pieces. Um, uh, hanging up at Micro Depot in Hamden, oh, if okay. anybody gets up there. Um, I had a piece there a few weeks ago that actually sold. It was a sleeping giant, and uh, it was a reactive metals piece with the rust and the whole giant, the, the, the profile of the sleeping giant mm. out of rust with mm. a patina sky. Oh. And, um, that must be and that sold. really nice. Yeah. And um, so I've got another piece hanging there with these, with these, uh, with these, this pro this mm. process. Uh, anyway, I, I, I'm fascinated with art that has that kind of unknown aspect to it. You know, as you say, if you paint with oils or you paint with watercolors, maybe watercolors is a certain amount of that you can't control yeah, because it's kind sure. of a fluid mm -hmm. thing. But certainly with oil paints or mm -hmm. acrylic paints, you know, the paint goes where you put right. it with the brush. It doesn't go anywhere else. So you have a lot of control over that as an artist. Whereas with this, you know, you're you're imagining what you what you think it's going to look like, but mm -hmm. it yeah. turns out somewhat of a surprise yes. for you too. So that's for very sure. cool, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so let's talk about the other part of this. Uh, your relig the religious art that you created. So you know, there was a point in time where artists depended on religious arts sort of mm -hmm. as their bread and butter right like yeah, all during the, the renaissance church loved the to middle spend ages money on art. Yeah. the church was the biggest customer for art absolutely you know, the catholic church in particular because they um they feature images you know mm -hmm. statues and and paintings so they like to and in the middle ages i think it was even more important for those images to be present in the church because you had a lot of um worshipers who would come in who might not have been uh, literate or mm -hmm. able to read mm -hmm. uh, stories and so everything was presented in a visual form and so all these all these famous artists that we know now uh, really got their start working for the church the Catholic Church in mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. you know during that period when yeah. all the Huge cathedrals were built, and and they had to be filled with art. So that sort of lost favor over time, right? I mean, like in the modern context of going to church, if you if you go into a more modern church building, you may not even find stained glass windows, or the right. windows might be very abstract, or mm -hmm. you know, just colors and not necessarily depicting any figures or well-known scenes and you don't see that much visual art in churches anymore you know they're pretty sort of stripped down to the basic architecture so here you get to do something that 
probably not many people get to yeah, do. Yeah, it was, it you was were a great opportunity. Yeah. yeah, it was so a great you were opportunity. To I was what? commissioned by um, Father Michael White of um, St. Catherine of Siena in West Simsbury, Connecticut. Uh, they wanted to update their Stations of the Cross in their church. The church is a very modern church, speaking of modern, very, very modern. And when he took over the church 10 or 12 or 15 years ago, uh, he wanted, he made it his mission to bring art into his church, and he uh, he commissioned a beautiful stained glass window. Um, he had a local um, a parishioner make the uh, a new altar and all kinds of wooden you know pieces out of out of wood, beautiful work. Um, and uh, he commissioned me to do the stations, and so. Um, what I what so our let's goal just was, let's just explain the stations of the cross are uh, incorporated into every Catholic church, right? And they represent the passion of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think there's probably variations right. among different. Um, yeah, most Christian churches but, have some right. form of that, but in Catholic it's the church, story Roman Catholic of, churches in particular, they have the fourteen stations of yes, the cross. Yes, it's basically the story of when Jesus was condemned to the crucifixion and the laying in the tomb. And I believe that some churches probably have a couple more after that mm -hmm. where they go right to the resurrection, but most don't. Right. So the 14th right. station being uh, Jesus laid in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so you were tasked so with yeah, uh, creating these. Father White wanted these to be, their, their stations they had were these little tiny relief sculptures on the wall that you could barely see, and he wanted them to be big paintings that, um, that would be graphic enough so that people would see what Jesus went through um, and realistic, but he wanted them to look modern and not like the traditional images with all the different like the figures. Like the Cecil B. DeMille movie with all yeah, the figures and yeah. the Romans so, dressed in their... So I did, I did a, a bunch of sketches and we went back and forth until I kind of, you know, got, you know, I, was like, I showed him a sketch one day and he was like, that's what I want, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think the first, the first one I did, well, I'll show you this one, which is the... Um, this is the first station of the cross, which is Jesus being condemned. And, um, and unlike a lot of traditional ones, you can see that he's just all by himself. He's alone. He's, you know... Um, and he's just, facing away. And he's facing away. And you can really kind of see that just isolation of right. him going, he's he has to go he's through a this. Figure. Yeah, he's going yeah. through it all by himself. And um, this is a print, but it, this is the size of the originals. And what I did is I, um, the originals all have this gilded edge that I designed this um, border that has, shows lilies all around. And lilies are the symbol of St. Catherine and also symbolize um, rebirth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so he liked that idea. Yeah. And I so mean, every, uh, so each of the paintings has this border on it. Yeah, I mean, when I look at this, you know, I, I was raised a Catholic. I, I still, I still go to church, uh, but this is so different from what mm -hmm. um, I grew up uh, looking at when you represent the Passion of Christ. Because here you see a man, you know, isolated in right. his suffering, and you see those thorns, that crowd of thorns on his head, which is like right there, a visual, and the way his hands are bound. And um, I think what you were able to do here is really capture the emotional aspect of what was going mm -hmm. on, you know, with him at that moment. And so it's, it's, it's uh, very compelling. Thank you, yeah, I, I, I feel like, um you know that that was the idea was to just it, it, it even though it's a very traditional subject and a very traditional thing to do to paint the stations of the cross um, yeah, but you father turned it white into wanted to see modern, something yeah. really different yeah, yeah and this is and it's got a modern um, sensibility to it it's not you know, yeah. it's not, it's not right. busy mm -hmm. with a lot of other things. You know, you just get that figure in the and, The focus on all of them are... you don't often see are, blue used in yeah, the vestments. Yeah, you know? the, the, and, you know, and the focus on each one of these is Jesus. He's, right. uh, he's just, you know, you can't help right. but look right. at, you know. 
And so that's the actual size in the church. That is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just have some prints. So you know, again, uh, it was it was very important for him to, you know, for the for Father White, he wanted mm -hmm. to see. What he said to me was, "I want my parishioners to look up at these and see what Jesus went through and say, wow, you know, he mm -hmm. must have really loved me to have to go through this.'" And so that was our. That was my goal. Yeah. Um, they needed to be really show the suffering and the yeah, and, and the that's, journey again, that he went it's through. Certainly, it's so, certainly obvious, you know, yeah. and and also the character of Mary, who um, yeah, that's very so often you see depicted in a different way, but here you could see how agonizing it is for her. You know, to be looking at Jesus right. in, the, in right. that particular I mean, way. If you're a parent, you can kind of. Uh, Imagine what that would be right. like. Yeah. So yeah. you humanized it, which I think is. So show us a couple of others. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> this would be the the first fall, mm -hmm. and Jesus fell three times, as they, and um, I wanted to kind of really show close up what he might be going through. So you know, there's like stones on the ground. He's he's trying to support this giant heavy thing and um, you know again really focused right on him and the way you have again you can see his face but not clearly mm -hmm. and so the way it's shrouded with his hair falling over uh, again I think it adds to the drama of it you know because normally right. you'd see you know you'd see Jesus's face with probably some kind of a glow you know uh, but here, you, you know, it's, it's it's barely seeing his features. And then if, here, of course, you can kind of see his face. On this is where he, uh, where Veronica right. wipes his face, and you can see his image image on the. So how did you get all these? So did you have people posing for you? Yeah. How did you, so like, what how did you I get did all is, um, is I uh, I. I you know, I, I did some you know, studying and research, obviously, and I decided how I wanted each, how I wanted each scene to look, and I did a little sketch or a couple of sketches of how I wanted it to look, and um, I hired a model, a couple of models, but um, my my Jesus model was great. He's um, he's he does models for you know art classes and 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 such, so he really knows how to hold a pose, and I would show him the sketch. And say, this is what I want you to do. You know, your arms here. This, and he would pose, and um, and I would take a bunch of photographs. Mm -hmm. And primarily, I worked from the photographs mm -hmm. um, because I don't know how much it would cost to have a, a model like for hours and for hours, hours on and end. Hours, but I did. Right. I would yeah. I would take photographs, and I would work from the photographs. And um, and then I'd have him come back if I wanted to rework it or if I just didn't like the way a certain scene was coming out and I just wanted to rework it all together. He came back four or five times, and we just you know redid the scenes. And um, I cut up an old sheet to make the toga, mm -hmm. um, you know. And it, it, we for the for the crucifixion we. Uh, I have a my studio has 14 foot ceilings with big beams, and I I, uh, I hung ropes from the beams so that he could hold on to the ropes, and uh -huh. get a, a an approximation of hanging on the cross. Oh. I mean, we had to get a little creative. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so you can see how you his know, body so, was hanging. Yeah, while exactly. He was, while he was so I it really needed to study what does that look like when a body's right. you know hanging from its arms, and what does the rib cage right. look like, and yeah. Right. And here, of um, course, with the sky, the dark sky, you're getting that further effect of you know yeah. with darkness at noon, according yeah. to the Bible, you know, when Jesus exactly. And so gave a lot of up. the um, uh, so you can see that the sky gets a little darker in each one, and right. until uh, when he's laid in the tomb, it gets a little bit lighter again. And this is where he's all um, yeah. kind of cleaned up. Yeah. And, and again, again that's he's such alone. a different depiction. Of Christ's body in the tomb, like you know, normally you you would be looking down mm -hmm. at it, but mm -hmm. here, you know, just the way you, how creatively you were able to show uh, what was happening, and and so you can see the difference in his face too. Mm -hmm. So now the agony mm -hmm. is over, right? 
and mm. so you, it's one of the first, it's one of the only images where you actually see his face yeah, full well, on. There, you a do, lot of them his, definitely see par his partially face. obscured. Here's one that you certainly do see his face, right. but it's not, it, it's a little painful to watch because, right. you know, he's, this is where he's being, yeah. he's, he's looking right at you. Exactly. And it's yeah. a little bit, yeah. um, again, it's disturbing and it's a little right. like, yeah. This. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's the effect that you're looking for, you know, just to sort of give a sense of the, physical aspect of what Jesus went through during that, during that whole ordeal that he had and not glorify it with a lot of angels mm -hmm. and, you know, right. and, and right. trumpets blowing right. and things like that. So, I, I mean, I, I, I just think it's, first of all, the fact that you had an opportunity to do that. I mean, that bottom line was, yeah, it, it was in, a commission you know, 2018 for, or whenever it was, yeah. which is like almost unheard of. Yeah, no, this, this, and, and, this and priest was great. That, and, you know, those images now, hung, hang, as they hang in that church, are having an impact on the people who see them. I can't imagine that. Uh, I haven't gone yet. I'm just telling you, I want to go and visit the church and, and experience, you know, the have the experience of walking around and seeing them uh, full on. But I can't imagine that there are people who go to worship at the church and are not affected by looking at those images and how they they really cause you to think about uh, what was happening. And so, I, you know, I think that's a wonderful thing for you, but a wonderful thing that you were able to do. Absolutely, and I have to give credit to I are, have to give credit to Father White because yeah, it was his vision. Yeah. I just really kind of executed it. Yeah, but, it's, yeah, it's wonderful to have someone who had the opportunity to do that and 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 took advantage Absolutely. of it. You mm -hmm. know, because probably someone else would never have even thought to do that. As mm -hmm. you say, they. Not that they didn't have Stations of the Cross, is that he wanted right. something that really would tell the story in a more dramatic and effective way. And so that's what for you sure, were able yeah, to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just think. So, 50 years from now, people will still be if in the hopefully church they'll... and, you know, yeah. appreciating what you created. So, I, I mean, I think that's the ultimate opportunity to be creative and and to have an impact mm -hmm. on your audience, which I'm sure is what you want to do every time you paint every time, something. Yeah. You want I mean, somebody to look at it and respond to something. Absolutely. In some I mean, I paint right. for me because I like it, right. I enjoy it, but right. yeah, you but You're looking you want, for a you, reaction absolutely. From, you know, from the viewer. Yeah. And as okay. you say, with, with these other pieces, you're never quite sure how it's going to come out. Right. Uh, but here, you you know, you 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 set out to do something. You know, you had a commission, and you, and you, you know, the, and you you knew what you wanted the outcome to be, and you certainly succeeded in doing that. Every time I see them, I I see something else. So I looked at them today, and I noticed a little more about uh, some of the aspects of it that I hadn't paid attention to the first time I saw them. You know, the fact that Jesus's face is sometimes obscured. But you see enough of its face to know what's going on, uh, and that I think it makes it makes it more dramatic mm. than if you just showed everything, you know, like a photograph. So anyway, thank you for being a guest today. You're very welcome. Yeah, thank I you for having really me. Really enjoyed having this conversation, and I hope that the viewers uh, enjoyed it too. And uh, if you want to take a Sunday drive sometime, you can go out to Glastonbury, East nope. Glastonbury. Nope, West Simsbury. West Simsbury. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Glastonbury to St. Catherine of Siena Church. Mm -hmm. And you can walk through and experience and have the uh, physical experience of, uh, of, uh, of seeing those stations as they are mounted uh, around the church. So thank yeah. you for viewing yeah. today. And, uh, and you can also see some of these reactive metal pieces on my website, hollywhitingart.com. Okay. Yes, and now is that where those larger pieces are too? You, you can see actually, those? you can see the okay. stations. Yeah, and you definitely can, yeah. go to the website because you'll be able to see some of those pieces that I fell in love with. So thanks again, Holly. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah.